Um, last time we started briefly talking about, I said if you had a number five, we, what would you multiply it with to get a one? And it's one over five, right? So that highlighted number that you multiply a number with to get a one, that's called the multiplicative inverse. That's a mouthful. But what about in the case of matrices? If you have a matrix, what can you multiply it with in order to get the analogous version of a one in matrix form, right? So what's a one in matrix form? In matrix form, the identity matrix is the same thing as the number one in real numbers, okay? So what we need to do now here is we're going to figure out what matrix do you multiply a matrix with in order to get the identity matrix. So let's recap. The identity matrix I is a square matrix such that A times I is equal to A. So if you multiply a matrix by the identity matrix, you get the same thing back. Now, this is it's analogous to the number one in real life. But this here is what I want you guys to focus on. If A is an N by N matrix, and if B is another matrix, and if you multiply A times B and you get the identity matrix, and if you multiply B times A and you get the identity matrix, then B is the inverse of A, okay? So if we have an inverse and if we multiply the matrix by the inverse, you get the identity matrix is what we're saying. To verify that A and B are inverses, you check if A times B is inverse uh, identity and B times A is identity, okay? All right, and that's just to remind you what an identity matrix is. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's do an example. It says to verify that A and B are inverse matrices. So if I were to tell you verify that 5 and 1 over 5 are inverses, what would you do? You would multiply them, you get a 1, and you go, aha, see, that's the inverse. So we're going to do the same thing. So first, we're going to do A times B. Okay, 5, 6, 4, 5, 5, negative 6, negative 4, 5. And this is exactly the same thing as matrix multiplication, which you guys did on the homework for today. Okay, 2 by 2, 2 by 2, what's the product going to be? Two by two. A 2 by 2. So if I want this one, that's row 1, column 1, and that's going to be 25 right? Um, uh, yeah, sorry. 25 minus 24, 1. Yeah? What's the next one? Next one over this one. So it's negative 30, positive 30. Do you want me to write out the, yeah? Okay, so let, let me, sorry, let me, let me write it out. I got in a, I got in a zone there. So we got 25 minus 24 for the first one. Then I have negative 30, positive 30. Next, I have row 2, column 1. Okay? I got 4 times 5 is 20. Right? Let's see here. 4 times 5 is 20. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. And then lastly, this one is row 2, column 2. So row 2, column 2, negative 24, positive 25. Oh, my God, isn't it, though? So what do we get? 1, 0, 0, 1. That's the identity matrix. Okay, but are we done? We're not done. Now we got to do B times A. 
okay? B times A is what? 5, negative 6, negative 4, 5. Yeah, for identity. Remember how this whole time I kept telling you A times B is not the same as B times A? Okay, well here we're doing A times B and now we're going to do B times A and see what we get. So, first row 1, column 1, 25 minus 24. And then row 1, column 2, 30, right? And then what? I'm sorry, 30. Negative 30. Okay. Next, row 2, column 1, negative 20, positive 20 is 0. Lastly, row 2, column 2, negative 24. Positive 25. That gives you 1, 0, 0, 1. Identity, because both ways gave you the same matrix and both of them are identity, then we can say, yes, they are inverses. Okay? So, that means A and B were inverses of each other, and this is the only situation where A times B and B times A will give you the same product, and that product has to be the identity matrix. Okay? Hmm? It can't be anything else. Be anything else. There's actually, I mean, it may be possible that you might get like a, like a very simple matrix that's the same. A, B times B, A, it's very unlikely. But as long as it's not identity, they're not inverses. Now, a lot of students, when they see this question, they go, well, can I just take one matrix, do this, find the inverse, and show that it's the same as the other one? The answer is no, because we have to stick to like mathematical protocols. If it says verify, you've got to do it using the theorem. Okay? Yeah? Any questions on this? Okay. Next, what we're going to do is move on from 2 by 2s to 3 by 3s. All right? You all ready? Okay. So moving on to 3 by 3 matrices, we want to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 and then the inverse of a 3 by 3. And again, when you see it written out, it looks more complicated than it is, but it's not. So for the determinant of a 3 by 3, here's what you do. For step 1, you reproduce column 1 and 2 to the left of the matrix. Just clone them over, copy them over. So do you see these two? A, B, D, E, G, H. Just copy them over here. There's literally no math there. You just copy this to the right of the matrix. That's it. Next, okay, you have to do it like, you have to be organized and neat though, right? Align the, everything. Next, you have to draw diagonals and find products of the respective diagonals. So do you see these diagonals here? I have a red one going this way, and another one, and another one. On each red diagonal, you have how many numbers? One, two, three. You multiply those by each other, then you multiply those by each other, then you multiply those by each other. Whatever you get from those, you add them to each other. And then we draw diagonals going in the opposite direction, Multiply these, multiply these, multiply these. You're going to get three additional numbers, and then those you subtract. And that's it. Okay? Let's just do one, and you guys will see. So we're going to find the determinant of A. Reproduce the two columns here. Okay? Now, let's draw diagonals. This one, this one, this one, okay? So, determinant of A is equal to, on this first diagonal, 
I have 3 times negative 1 times 5. How much is that? Negative 15. Negative 15. Plus, okay, I put the plus sign, then I go back. 1 times 4 times 1 is 4. Plus, 0 times this times this, 0. Love it when we have zeros. Now we're going to go in the other way, and we're going to subtract them all. So here's what I do. I put my minus first, then I go to the matrix. One diagonal, two diagonals, three diagonals. So on this first diagonal, I have a 0. Wait a Minus. Second diagonal, positive 24. Minus negative 10. Okay? 5 times negative 2 times 1. And that's it. Now we just add these things. Okay? Negative 15 plus 4. Negative 11. <laughs> minus 24 plus 10. Minus 12. I'm sorry, minus 14. Happens to the best of us. So this is negative 25. That's it. Okay? That's it. All right? Not too bad, right? Okay. There is no next step. This is it. This is the determinant. This is the determinant of a 3 by 3. Okay, Misha, we're, we're over it now. That's the answer you would give me on a test, on a quiz, and on a homework. That's crazy. On this next test, and even on tests in like 2024, even in France, even in the southern hemisphere, that's all you need for the determinant of a 3 by 3. Even below the equator, even on top of the equator, even in the Amazon. Okay. Now, so let's recap what we've done so far. Okay? We have had. We have had determinant and inverse of a 2 by 2 and a 3 by 3, okay? Um, so we learned how to find determinant and inverse of a 2 by 2. We learned how to find determinant of a 3 by 3. Next, the inverse of a 3 by 3 we're only going to learn how to do it on a calculator because doing it by hand is too long a process. Nobody does it by hand, right? We're only going to do it using the calculator. So go ahead and take out your calculators, please. The good thing about the TI is everything is menu-based, right? So you're always going to go to the menu. And then you see here there's matrix and vector, number seven. Number one says create. And then number one says matrix. And we're going to create a 3 by 3. So if you're here, if you do 3 tab 3, that's easiest, I think. Here we go. In here, you put in your matrix, right? And the easiest thing, um, so let's put in the example here, right? Let's put in this example. The easiest thing to do it like swiftly with, with your like keystrokes is press tab in between the numbers. So three tab, one tab, zero tab. Go ahead and put it in. Oops. Four. Okay. Once you do this, don't press anything after the five. Press the left, I'm sorry, the right arrow button to exit out of the matrix. So the right arrow to exit out of the matrix, right? So you see how your cursor is now to the right of the matrix? Now, all you need to do is press this button. This is the caret. It's to the very left of the four. Okay, so to the power of minus one. But remember to put the minus underneath the three, the negative, not the subtraction. Minus one. Enter, there's your inverse. Um, there is a setting. I can tell you guys the setting. Because you're going to want to do it in a in fraction form. Okay? Um, okay. So here, all you have to do now is for um, example number six, 
right? You say A inverse is equal to 13 over 25, negative 14 over 25. Just write it down. Yeah. I had to redo them as well, okay? There's that. One application that we're going to talk about here is if you're given the vertices of a triangle, you can very easily find the area of the triangle using matrices, right? And the way that works is this. You create a three by three matrix, okay? Now, okay, in here, you put the vertices in whichever order you want. It doesn't matter. So, 1, 6, 6, 4, 2, 0. That only gives you two columns. You still need a third column. And we're not going to go over why because it's a very long, like, mathematical process. But in the third column, you always put in a column of 1s. Not zeros, not fives, not negative, just ones. Okay? Now, you're going to find the determinant of A. This is exactly what I just said. Always a column of ones, not negatives, not zeros, always a column of ones. Okay? Now, let's find the determinant. To find the determinant, we're going to reproduce the two columns. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, we have four plus zero plus zero. So that's a 12. Yeah, yeah. okay. So then minus eight minus zero minus, what is that, 36. Okay, so now I have 16 minus 42, minus 44, right? And how much is that? 24, 28, negative 28, right? Okay, so that's the determinant. It's negative 28. So if this was just finding a determinant, that's how you would do it, right? A little bit of review. Now, the area, however, this is the important thing. The area is always, okay, not just for this problem, always. Okay, what's the formula for the area of a triangle? Just half times base times height, right? We never did the half right? So we do it here. It's half times the determinant, but the determinant's negative, right? So it's always half times the absolute value of the determinant, which is 14. Okay, that's the area. 14 units squared. No. Okay, and that's the end of the chapter, seriously.